Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. Sure bet coffee. Put the giddy up in your cup. like he's going to jump if he handles the distance and he's not overwhelmed by the lack of seasoning five five three i could see a two i could see a one i can even see a zero if he's a really good horse if he goes forward puts him and gets the distance puts him square in the race i don't care if he ran it through one or whatever doesn't make no difference to me uh if we're talking strictly on the thoroughbreds this horse fits as a forward moving pattern and looks dangerous based on that. So that's me. Hogburn, very interesting in Detroit, in my opinion. This is a horse that always showed a lot of potential. Uh, exploded second time out, win by four. Here comes Cogburn, and Cogburn has his sights on Nobles in the final 16th of a mile. There's a lot of turf in this pedigree, top and bottom. It will be Cogburn on the outside getting to the front. The other thing that I like about, about Cogburn a lot is when I look at his star graph numbers, uh, he's got some fast races, he's got a one, and Cogburn under Ricardo Santana Jr. wins the Troy. I love in these three-year-old races. Again, those of you that, that, that watched the show and have been reading, you know, you know, my columns and a lot of my handicapping things all over the years know I like up and comers. I like betting horses to do things that you, you know maybe we can anticipate that some others can't, and that's how you sometimes beat um, a lot of favorites. I like program trading. And program trading, program trading, resilient coming back on the inside. Program trading would not be denied. Quite a barrier was very interesting to me for a couple of reasons. We heard from Blake, we know what the bond thinks, okay? Second time Rick Dutrow. This time gets the jump from the catbird seat and turn it for home. White of Barrio was going to be in the race, if not on the lead, in the race, and the one they got to go get. Really they're at the top of the stretch in the Whitney, and White of Barrio is the leader narrowly over Giant Game. We've had Irad breezing him a bunch at Belmont before he came up here. I know Irad really likes him. You know, we think that he should improve off of his last race. And, you know, if he gets a clean trip, we're expecting him to run big. Look at White of Barrio in a red or T. In a runaway, White of Barrio wins by almost six lengths. Now, probably to me, the most intriguing horse in the race, uh, Arabian Knight, who I thought was probably um, one of the best three-year-olds early in the year. Feel for the one million dollar fan duel Pacific Classic sent on their way. On the inside, Go Rocket Ride broke beautifully and goes straight to the lead. Being joined now by Arabian Knight. Two favorites, one, two in the early going. Arabian Knight is the, 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 the last and maybe, maybe, maybe mirror, mirror on the wall who's the fastest one of all. At the end of the day, it just might be Arabian Knight if he goes forward as much as I think he can off that one and three quarters. It's Arabian Knight hanging on. Go Rocket Rider, Arabian Knight has won the Pacific Classic. I land on the bottom horse, Bright Future for Todd Fletcher. As the field turns for home, Bright Future is up to take the lead. One for one at Saratoga. You you all know how much I like that. And we all know that all meet long, the horses that went over the track, the horses that like the track. Bright Future digging in. Proxy's trying to get him. Bright Future or Proxy. Bright Future, Proxy, here's the line. Photo finish, Bright Future.
bottom line is this. He's had enough time to recover from that. Is he going to regress? He can regress and win. He can regress two, three, four points and still win the race off that. If he runs anything back close to that, the race is for second. It's as simple as that. schemes on, on the outside uh, the bottom horse for Norm Cassie uh, horse didn't do a lot of running first time out at Churchill Downs going five eighths of a mile and what I thought was a pretty fast race on on not such a fast track that day uh, he was six by nine didn't really do any running but he only went off you know six seven and one so he took some money and that turned out to be a very live race bunch of horses come out of that race to win which I, I like with, 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 with two year olds. And they're off, and Woodcourt flies out of the gate, immediately joined by Market Street. And these two duel through the opening furlong. Rhyme Schemes gets a good spot, two off the pace in third. But he can certainly clear, and, and, and Santana is, a, is, is aggressive. And I can see this horse going two for two with the blinkers, and I'm hoping that they bet Pletcher's horse and the other horse. And now Rhyme Schemes. Makes the move at the top of the stretch. It's a good one, too. Rhyme Schemes takes over. Opens up two on Market Street in second. In the center of the track, it's Hall in third. But with a furlong left to go, Rhyme Schemes is long gone. A spectacular display from Rhyme Schemes. Running home all alone in the Saratoga Special by eight or nine lengths. I got a very strong opinion here, and if you watch replays like I do and take notes, I don't know how you get past uh, Mo Donegal. Uh, I'm hoping he's not the favorite. I'm hoping they make We the People the favorite. Uh, I think it's Mo Donegal's race to lose. Um, and I'll tell you this, um, it's probably uh, my strongest opinion on the day. Uh, you know, I just, uh, all roads lead to Mo Donegal for me. Uh, any which way I, I, I dice and slice this race. If you watch his replay, you know, it reminds me of Code of Honor. Code of Honor, if you watch the Derby replay, okay, I always said, you know, and I, I, I made a score on Code of Honor when he won the Travers, and I remember I was in the paddock for the Travers at Saratoga, and I forget who it was, but somebody from one of the now somebody saw me that knew me and interviewed me on for either TV or the internet or whatever the heck it was, asked me who I liked. I said, Code of Honor, can you tell us why? I said, well, I handicapped them, I liked them, and I said, and you know, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but if you watch the replay of the Kentucky Derby, if it didn't rain and he wasn't on the rail, he probably would have won the Derby. And the guy looked at me like I had two heads, but if you watch the replay, I believe that. If you watch Mo Donegal's Derby replay, okay, there's no way you could watch that replay, in my mind, and bet Rich Strike can't do it if you if you if and, you know maybe stevie wonder could do it or ray charles i mean no disrespect to anybody but i don't see how anybody else could do it he ran about 100 yards further and was finishing very very good okay now transfer to what is it five weeks later whatever it is a mile and a half a small field what do you got in the belt well eight horses as opposed to 21 in the 20 in the derby okay uh I ran from the rail, took him to the outside, took the overland route, turned for home. He was probably closer to Keeneland than he was to Churchill Downs. I mean, it was ridiculous the trip that this horse had. He ran so much further than the winner that I don't see how you could watch the race where the winner come out of the 21 hole, moved inside. The seas parted like the Red Sea. Everything went right. Perfect storm. Boom, comes up the rail and win. Mo Donegal between horses, carried wide, went wider. Everything, I just, I can't see how you can watch that race and bet Rich Strike over Mo Donegal. So that's that. Okay. Sure bet coffee play today, which is actually in race eight. 
I like number one, Francisco Clemente, who I believe should have won last time out in California. Uh, was on the inside, swung very wide, finished very well, was probably best that day, but I think we see an even better race from him today. Down the center, Francesco Clemente. He's trying to shift in, but he's shifting gears. And here he comes now, Francesco Clemente, front and center, and going away to win the McKnight. We're gonna see a very special filly um, in warm heart who is just nothing, nothing but talent. I don't believe, in my opinion, Shug's horse that a lot of people are high on has the seasoning to handle her at this particular point, although he may go on and be a really good horse. Today is today, and the future's the future. Here's Warm Heart. She got through at the rail. What a ride, and Warm Heart has hit the front. The globe trotting Warm Heart is clear. Outside, I'm very busy, charging hard late. Warm Heart wins the Pegasus World Cup turn. If there was ever a race, in my opinion, that pace makes the race, this year it's the Pegasus World Cup. Senior Buscador is a horse that I think can definitely slip into the triples, superfectors, maybe even the exacta. And if something crazy happens and we get a pace meltdown, I think Junior Alvarado is an underrated, very strong finisher. And I think that horse can definitely surprise people and, 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 and make some noise late. On the inside, it's still National Treasure holding on. Down the center, Senor Buscador, he's running out of time. National Treasure would not be denied. Opinion that she can go forward or at least maintain or maybe only regress a little bit and still be a major player here, even with the quick turnaround because she just haven't, hasn't bottomed out yet as far as we can see. She's got three, three, one and a quarter negative numbers. So that's a big jump forward, but she's just getting better and better. Uh, and sometimes these horses do that. So until we see her bottom out, I don't know where her bottom is yet. So I can't say that that, that screams a, a regression. And again, a regression or, or a slight one uh, still makes her a contender. So I think she's gonna run pretty close to what she did. Um, and if she does happen to go forward, then probably bye-bye. It is here, the big day, the day almost all of us in horse racing wait for, Breeders' Cup Saturday. It looks like we're going to see some really, really impressive races on Saturday. It starts with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, one of my stronger opinions on the card is, is Goodnight Olive to start things off. I think she gets a perfect trip. Goodnight Olive, six in a row and a Breeders' Cup champion. Got modern games going in the turf mile for Godolphin. Uh, the Godolphin and Aiden O'Brien horses we said on Past the Wire TV all week long on the backside. Those two contingents stuck out from all the rest. Modern games looking for a, a, a big race in front of him. Modern games storming down the center of the court. Modern games, a two time Raiders Cup winner. You bet he is. That is Rebels Romance who in my humble opinion is one of Godolphin's uh, better chances this year. Rebels Romance is a very, very good looking Godolphin horse that can absolutely win this race. Rebels Romance is a must use. Rebels Romance! got Flightline that they're putting in the best ever category. There's no question that the race he ran in the Pacific Classic is one of the best races we've seen any racehorse run ever. It is Flightline, it is mind tingling, jaw dropping, awe inspiring, secretariat like Raiders Cup Classic win. He won it by eight legs on the wire. Nobody does it better.